now. There we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Rhett Power. This is sort of a special edition of my lunchtime, my new lunchtime show on LinkedIn Live, uh, where I interview thought leaders, best-selling authors, business leaders, to find out what they know that uh, can help us be better, things that we're not doing, that they're doing, that sets them apart. And today is a special edition of that. Uh, I've got Paul Corona, who uh, Paul and I have spoken several times now. Um, and Paul is a really interesting guy. He is a Marshall Goldsmith 100 coach. He is a professor of leadership at Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern. And I, Paul, I wanted to say that I uh, loved your first book. I think I told you this before. Uh, the Wisdom of Walk-Ons, which is about uh, how people kind of overcome these great obstacles to perform at some of the highest levels of, of sport. Um, but you've really outdone it with Lee's habits. This blew me away because it, the reason is, is you've simplified how you can build stronger relationships. And so I wanted to ask you, did I kind of get what I was supposed to get out of the book? And yeah. this is the book, by the way, it's uh, Leave Three Habits. Uh, it's on Amazon. I know Paul's going to tell us where else we can get it if, if there are other places. And he's got a great story behind this. Yeah, first, uh, you did get exactly what you're supposed to get, probably because it's a lot shorter read than Wisdom of walk on So I appreciate that, Rhett. And uh, it's always great to be with you. I'm honored to join you today and uh, happy to help the viewers with however we can help them move forward with their relationships and their happiness. Yes. Well, um, what is the story? Uh, because you're right, this is not a 300 page book. And, and most of us uh, who write, we get carried away and we, we write these long, I, 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 mine's around here. So my last one's around here somewhere, you know, it's a, about 300, 400 pages. And uh, Lee's three habits is, is shorter. It's something you're able to digest in under an hour probably 30 minutes, um, but it was really, really powerful. What's the story behind it? What, what, what sort of motivated you to write something like this? Yeah, thanks for asking. So you're exactly right. The first thing about it being short and sweet and a 30 minute read is what really motivated me. I just think that people are overwhelmed with all kinds of great ideas and concepts and tools to help them perform better at work, to be happier, to lose weight. And all of these things that are out in the market, I think are very well intentioned. Almost all of them are very good. I thought that was a bit of a problem though at this point and with what's going on in current society because a lot of people get overwhelmed by all this information overload. Mm -hmm. And then they don't focus on what they really wanna get better at. And then it doesn't work. It's sort of like a big New Year's resolution. Right, right. So what really motivated me to create Lee's Three Habits with my partner is I'm sick of that problem and I want to help us be part of the solution so that people can focus on something that's really valuable to them, happiness and relationships. And if they can sustain this, then I think we all win. And the other motive, you know, our work with Marshall Goldsmith gives us right. an opportunity to pay it forward. So we want to start doing that as soon as possible. I think it'd be a nice way to pay it forward around the world. Well, I, there's a, there's a, your part, you mentioned your partner. Uh, I, one of the other really neat aspects of this, of this book was the, the illustration and the, and the, the little movie that you guys made with it, which I watched before I read the book. Uh, I don't know if I did that in the right order, but um, tell us about him. I mean, uh, uh, Eddie is a really interesting uh, person in, in and of himself. I mean, how did you guys get together? How did you guys partner? Yeah, so Eddie and I met through the Marshall Goldsmith 100 group. And you're right, he's a very interested guy and very, very great person. Um, he is a two-time Emmy-nominated animator for The Simpsons. He's now with Netflix. <laughs> and so when I had the idea to create a movie... It had that feel. By the way, it had that feel. You could, yeah, yeah, you can tell by the, the genre of the art on the front cover of the book. And in this micro movie, I had the idea that we had to reach people in different ways with different media to suit their ways of taking in information. And so, of course, we need something in video this day and age. So we created this three-minute micro movie, which I wrote and Eddie animated. 
And it's a before and after transformation of this guy, Lee, who we all can relate to. Lee right. being a guy who has trouble with relationships and then Lee being a guy who gets better and has improved relationships and then everybody's happy. And then as you mentioned, and you did read it and consume it in the perfect order, if people get the concept with the micro movie, three minutes, then they read the handbook, 30 minutes max. And then if they really wanna go deep, there's a workshop that I lead, which is 90 minutes, which goes into all the how to. And it right. customizes and contextualizes all these ideas for people at work, at home, wherever they are. It, the, one of the points that you make, and I've, I've found myself, just to give you some feedback, I've, over the last couple of weeks since you gave me the book out in San Diego, uh, I, am, I really am more conscious about those, those one-on-one conversations I have with people and how I start them and how I work my way through them. Um, because you talk about in the book and it just, I mean, the, the, by the way, the video really, really illustrates this wonderfully. Um, and we all see ourselves in Lee. Um, I caught myself this past Sunday doing a Lee. (laughs) Um, you talk about how we tend to uh, tell, talk and take too much. Um, and are there some ways that, so can you give me some examples of that if you can? And, and how do, we, how do we change that? How do we catch that behavior? Are there some tips that you use, um, things that can help us sort of, and in the book, are there some exercises that you can walk through? Yeah, sure. So Lee's three habits are to do a better job of three things we all do every day, but not very well all the time. Asking, listening, and giving. And just as you said, human nature is to do the opposite, which is telling, talking, and taking. So if we can be really intentional intentional about doing a better job of asking, listening, and giving, that's the magic of the relationship building part. And when you say, so how do we do this? And are there tools and things? Yeah, in the book, we have a system to help Mm -hmm. people internalize these habits and sustain them for the long term. And then uh, in terms of examples, the one I like to give is actually a, a personal one. Okay. Uh, you know, so I, I'm a, a parent, and I know you are, and, and uh, right. you and I both share the value of trying to be as good as we can as parents, right? And uh, our oldest daughter is uh, 18, and mm-hmm. she's an athlete who wanted to quit one of her sports last year. And so rather than break out into a parental lecture about how, you know, we shouldn't quit, and this is a metaphor for life, and things are hard, right. I just tried to practice what we're preaching here. And I asked her some questions to understand where she was coming from, why she was considering quitting, what the benefits would be, what the potential setbacks would be. And I let her just answer those questions. And I listened to her without judgment, without interruption, without adding value and offering my two cents. And what she did was talk herself out of quitting without me doing much of anything. And so by asking, not telling, by listening, not talking, I was able to give her some respect, some appreciation, and she thankfully didn't quit the team, ended up being a captain and has had a great experience uh, for her senior year. And then, of course, it, it helped me feel good because I felt like I was doing a better job as a parent than I would have normally, which is to, you know, yeah. to tell her what she should do. That's, and we're, I mean, hello, guilty. Guilty is short. <laughs> um, I do that all the time. Um, <laughs> I'm well, glad you're normal. <laughs> good. I, thank you. I needed that positive. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you talk about the key to building stronger relationships is, is the self-awareness. Um, are there some other tips that, um, like, I, I know we, you and I talked about, you have some, some uh, accountability partners or, 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 or people that you turn to to talk about this stuff. What are some ways, are there some ways that we can all sort of, I mean, you've made this really simple, which is what I like because it's doable, right? And you got to put the work in, obviously, for anything, any kind of change. But if, if you do put the work in that this, this, this really can be transformational. 
for you and for your relationships and business and it and in and life um so i, I just want to give everybody as many reasons to go out and buy this um and 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 be able to accomplish it are so are there some other ways that they can can do this because i know it's sure. hard to do this by yourself sure sure it is and uh we talk about this at the end of the handbook and i'm happy to share it now too so the idea is that this asking listening and giving more not exclusively just more than telling talking and taking can be internalized and we suggest three steps one is post ask listen and give at work at home okay. on the mirror wherever you can just to take it in i mean i put it on my screensaver you know i hope it's okay that i show people this rat you know here's lee ah, this here's reminds lee. me constantly to ask listen and give so if you've got reminders around your home i saw one of your airpods the other day <laughs> yeah yeah oh that, yeah yeah uh, that's a great way that's the coolest way to sustain this there was uh, a guy who went through the workshop and was so uh into this he had his uh airpods engraved with the words ask listen and give that's so that's awesome. a that's a that's a good sustainability tool yes, so um however you want to remind yourself ask listen and give i suggest you know in the morning during the day at night very quick reminders so it's constantly top of mind so mm -hmm. that's like your plan and you have to be cognizant of your plan right you got to review your plan to execute your plan and then right. one way to execute uh is to not only do it, but then grade your own performance. So it's as if you give yourself a performance review every night and you could use an app for that or write it in a journal okay. or any other tool that you would like to keep track of. You know, how well did I ask, listen, and give today? I rate myself on a one to 10 scale. That's what I encourage. And so uh, the accountability with self, what are you using an app or a journal or whatever you like, that's another step in the process of how do we actually do this and sustain it. What do you shoot for every day, score-wise? What do, I mean, to you, what's success? Yeah, I mean, I try to go for a nine. Okay. I don't think ten is uh, reachable for me very often. I try to go for a nine, and my averages right now are in the eights. Okay. Now look, I'm I'm obsessed with this stuff, so I am all in. And, right. You know as a person, as a professional, as a coach. I mean, I'm all about this. So it's okay if people don't achieve those relatively high scores right away. Okay. So there's this self rating, self accountability with a tool. Okay. It takes 30 seconds to rate myself every night. And then the third idea is exactly what you mentioned. If we have an accountability partner, it's nice to get support from somebody who's trying to do the same thing. So if you get on the phone with your accountability partner once a week, okay. just talk for five minutes about how you did this week with asking, listening, and giving. What worked? What could you have done better? What are some examples, et cetera? Then the accountability partner and you support each other on this journey. And if you think about it, post, ask, listen, and give your plan and read it. Then rate how well you do every night. And then talk about it once a week with an accountability partner. A lot of people will think, well, that's going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort. Yeah. It should take no more than one minute a day to read your plan and rate your performance. And then a five minute phone call where you're each talking for five minutes tops, 10 minutes at the most. Okay. You know, so if, if we can invest 10 to 15 minutes in this, then we see the results. And we know this from the processes that Marshall uses to coach CEOs around the world. And so this methodology is, is proven, if you will, only if people do the work. It's so simple. It's almost comical. However, it's not easy to do this because, as you know, it takes a lot of discipline. Right. People forget or they're busy or they're tired, and, and that's just normal. So the real way to do this is with the discipline. A lot of people think they want it. A lot of people say they're committed. But only those of us who invest the time and energy in doing it are going to sustain these behavior changes so that they become habits. These right. are habits. What do you think? Lee is this guy we can all relate to, as you said. He's just, oh, yeah, I got a brother-in-law. That's Lee. He talks too much. Uh, and you'll see this in the micro movie, right? Uh, or you know this person at a party who's just completely self-absorbed, and they just ramble on and on. So, you know, Lee is this fictional character created so that we can all relate to him. 
because we all are leads sometimes. Yes, we all have been guilty, definitely. What um, I, you mentioned you went and talked about your your accountability partners. How do people? I'm I'm always curious how other people do this, but how do you, how did you pick your people? Um, and, and what do you look for in an accountability partner? Uh, because I think to me, that's, that's one of those things where you really got to put your pride aside, right. And, and be able to talk to somebody honestly. And so, because there are moments where you're saying, you know, that, that was a, just a, I blew it today. Right. Um, and you gotta be honest with yourself and you've got to have somebody that's objective and, and fair. And I mean, there are all kinds of things I'm thinking of that, that you, that I, at least I need. And sometimes you need that one person to just pick you up too, right? And say, come on, you can do it. Um, so what, how do you pick someone? Because I think that's a challenge. Yeah, it is. And uh, I try to do it and I try to encourage others I coach to do it using the criteria you mentioned. So okay. first is you have to have some familiarity with each other enough to build trust. Right. So if you trust each other, that is the foundation. Then if you're able to know each other just well enough to work together, I think that's good because you maintain the objectivity. But if you know each other too well, I actually don't think that's good. So for example, you know, you might think, well, I'll do this with my life partner or I'll do this with my best friend from high school. Right. And, you know, maybe that'll work, but I don't know about you. If I talked to some of my best friends from high school and I told them what I wanted to do with my professional life, or my, they'd be like, you're, you are doing what? Come on. I'd be laughed out of the room. <laughs> yeah. So both of us, and I, I bet a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. So the familiarity has to be one where uh, we know each other just enough, but not too much. And okay. then you talked about supporting each other when you're down or challenging each other when you're not sticking with your plan. The comfort has to be there where we can push back on each other. Right. So just last week, this happened with my accountability partner and I where okay. he was challenging me on a behavior that I've been trying to get better at and I have not succeeded. And so he kept pushing me in a really respectful way uh, and gave me another idea on how I could do a better job. And so that was just textbook. Other times, you know, uh, my accountability partner, I actually have two of them I talk to every week, uh, were more like creative idea factories for each other. How about this? How about that? Why? Why not? versus, you know, strict disciplinary people who are, yeah. you know, introducing penalties. <laughs> so, uh, you dread that, to go see. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's how I like to approach it. That's how I encourage others to approach it. And, you know, the traditional metaphor is if you want to go exercise, if you have an accountability buddy, right. you're likely to show up to the gym because they are too. And then you're likely to work out harder because they are too. It's just like that. It's, and this is, again, it's so simple, but it's that is not easy awesome, to do. That no. is an awesome analogy. That is an awesome analogy. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, another question that's completely off this uh, subject. What are you the most proud of in your work? I mean, you've, uh, been able to coach at a really high level, teach at a really high level, um, and written uh, a successful book. What uh, what are you most proud of? What's the what's that one thing that you you wake up and you say, or you think about and you smile? What what is that for you? Yeah, thanks for asking, and thanks for the kind words. I think we're both very fortunate in that regard to have uh, some some success so far, and that's great. Um, I think the thing I'm most proud of is my role as a parent. Uh, my wife and I were very fortunate. We have a good partnership, 25 years, and our teen children uh, actually will talk to us and hang out with us and laugh and listen. And I, I got to tell you, I feel very fortunate and am proud of that. Whatever we've been able to do or not do and the luck we've had, all comes together, but uh, that's something that I feel particularly good about with our oldest going off to college in a couple of months, especially. And um, how do you feel about that? How do you really feel about that? 
Uh -huh. That's a great question. <laughs> I'm too, you, I, don't have to you, don't, you don't have to answer that question. Hey, I'm thrilled for her. And, you know, it's going to be a big void in the, in the family household. But uh, this is how it rolls, right? And you got to roll with it. That's so right. um, the thing that I think helped with all this, to have a good partnership at home with my wife almost all the time and with our, our children, I, I really have tried to do these least three habits of asking, listening, and giving since they were born. Um, I remember coming home with our daughter in a cab in New York City 18 years ago, and I committed to myself to try to be more of that parent that we just described to each other mm -hmm. than the one that I might naturally do under pressure. And I know you're uh, very dedicated to your parenting as well, and, and with everything you've been through, the the awesome things that you've experienced as a, as a son. And so I tried to do this and model these behaviors before they turned into a system with a movie and a book and a workshop. Right. And so this is, you know, this is not a cartoon and a quick read to me. This is a, a, a life commitment. It's something I'm really trying to help others embrace and uh, habitualize so that they get the results that I've been fortunate enough to have. And it, and it sounds like what what you're talking about too is having it kind of all in sync, right? Your your professional life, your home life, um, and and if you're making a conscious effort to work on all of those areas and make them your values and all that kind of sync up. I don't, I don't know how to put that into words, but you know that that's uh yeah that's pretty remarkable. I mean, that that uh, uh, wow. Now well, you know. Uh, sorry to interrupt. No, no. Which is yeah. very, very badly of me, right? Um, you told, I, yeah, I needed you to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do try to live this integrated life like we all do. We're professional mm -hmm. and personal lives and community lives, whatever that means to, to all of us. They all come together, and it's like a 24-7 existence. And um, I, I do feel fortunate that uh, – most days I, I do feel in sync, as you said, I think was a great way to put it. And uh, it took me uh, what seems like an eternity to get here. So this was a very uh, up and down journey for me. Sure. You know, my 33, 34 year career uh, looked a certain way on paper, but until I felt it on the inside, I really wasn't um, achieving what, you know, you and I usually have been fortunate enough to achieve and what we try to help others achieve. It hasn't, uh, it hasn't come smoothly for me at all times. So I just want to be real and say, you know, it took me about 25 years. And until I was in my high 40s, I, I didn't really know how to make sense of it or do an, uh, a good job of helping others move forward. So for the last, you know, uh, eight years or so, I, I feel like I've been able to make a better contribution. No, fair enough. I mean, I, I've always said I, I would have been a terrible parent in my 20s and I, I waited until I was in my late thirties to have kids. And, you know, I just, I just wasn't, when they, I wouldn't, I, I could have done it, but I wouldn't have been as conscientious and uh, as ready and as, uh, as maybe uh, prepared for it. Um, and, and that goes for, uh, you know, where, where I am professionally as well. I, I think now, I found I found that 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 you know you, I, I remember telling an audience a couple of months ago um, because I was uh, when I was in my I think it was in my late thirties and I was doing a a, a consulting job and I was getting to travel I, I mean I was getting to work internationally um, I was making good money it was checking all the boxes but there was something in my gut that this was saying yeah this isn't right you know, and learning to listen to that, um, you know, wow, that made a difference. When I learned to listen to what my mind and, and, and listen to what, you know, what it was saying and what my gut was saying or my heart, um, uh, I am now, yeah, I am in that same place you're in where I, I feel like I am in the right place. There's a calmness about that. There's no angst to to look for the new th you know that next thing right there was yeah so i'm in sync i think i think is what what yeah very cool congrats, congrats. well no, I, and, uh, 
I'm like you. It took a long time. <laughs> it took a long time. Yeah. And that's so I, okay. I joke okay. with people, you know, whether I get to teach uh, MBA candidates in their 30s or people in their 50s and 60s, I say, why should you, why should you listen to me if this took me 25 years to figure it out and 10 years to get hopefully good at it? Because I can just save you a lot of time. That's why. I can't <laughs> save you work. I can save you a lot of time. And, uh, you know, you talk about these uh, thoughts and feelings you've had on this journey. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't really make sense of them with much certainty until I read all the research on this. And uh, it suggests that true fulfillment and happiness. And when I say happiness, I'm not talking about, you know, pure pleasure or hedonism. Right. You know, this is a handbook about happiness, but it's true fulfillment. And uh, all this research suggests that it comes not from more fame, more fortune, more achievements, right? This is all we do is achieve, 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 and help people achieve. It, it comes from mostly, if not exclusively, the quality of our relationships. And whether you want to dissect the research and criticize it or accept it for what it is, I mean, this stuff is published in Oxford University Press, conducted by Harvard Medical School and, you know, National Academy of Sciences, some pretty serious scholarship. And, and they're all suggesting that, you know, this, this true fulfillment comes from quality relationships. And it doesn't dismiss achievement, nor does it dismiss things like having uh, health and wellness. Of course we have to have that. And we have to have some level of comfort, you know, financial resources, et cetera. And though, and it's, it's not enough to just do that. You know, you, you can be an unhappy billionaire. You can be an unhappy Nobel laureate. And uh, if you have your relationships going well with friends and colleagues and loved ones, I mean, just think about it. Isn't that when you feel best? I don't know about you, but that's totally me. Look, I'm not going to be thinking about what I accomplished on my deathbed. I'm going to be thinking about the people. I mean, yeah. You know, if, I have, if I'm lucky enough to be able to think about that at that time, I'm going to be thinking about parents and friends and kids and experiences right that's yeah and how rich the, and you know and, and the richness of those so i um absolutely yeah 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 and so you know back to what you asked in the beginning this whole least three habits system is based on simplicity and focus and sustainability around relationships only three behaviors hopefully they turn into habits and then when they're habitual you know this is just how we all roll and then we will realize the benefits of better relationships wherever we are, more true fulfillment. And uh, these, these behaviors are part of everybody's life. I, you know, I don't care what your walk of life is, where you are on this planet. If you can do a better job of being present and asking, listening, giving for the right reasons, I, I think it's a, it's a foundation. And uh, anyway, this is what we're trying to do. We just launched a couple months ago. We'll see what happens. Well, everybody will be richer for it uh, and not in the monetary sense uh, if you read this book. So where can they get it? Yeah, so you mentioned Amazon, and that's exactly where we are. And there are different versions. The paperback in front of you that you just showed is also available as an e-reader on Kindle, and it's okay. also available as an audio book on Amazon or if you go direct to Audible. And then it's also available as an audio book on iTunes through Apple. So you can get it three ways on Amazon, or you can also get it via Apple iTunes. And uh, all this is available at our website, which has the micro movie and the accessibility for the handbook distribution. And then if people want to do the workshop with me, the 90 minute workshop, it's all the website, uh, Lee's three habits.com L E E S the number three habits.com. Well, Paul, thank you so much for uh, chatting with us today. telling us about the uh, Lee's three habits. Uh, everyone go out, uh, get a copy of this uh, and start working to implement these, uh, these exercises in your life. It will make a huge difference. It's already making a difference in mind. Uh, again, uh, if you like the program uh, and this helps you, like and share it so other people can benefit. And 
tune in on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 12 Eastern Standard Time for my new show, Lunchtime on LinkedIn Live. Thank you. Thanks, Rhett. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Paul.